Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be studying about switching techniques. So, before starting with different types of switching techniques, let us first understand what is switching and why is there a need for switching. So, uh, whenever you want to communicate with any device in the world, the best option would be to develop a dedicated connection with that device. And uh, in that dedicated connection, the physical connection between using wires will be the best option. But for larger networks, that means uh, when you want to communicate with many different people across the globe, then developing dedicated connections between all possible combinations of senders and receivers in the world is not a feasible option. It becomes very costly and it does not, uh, it is not a realistic choice. So what we do is we use the concept of switching. Switching basically allows you to, uh, uh, to do your data communication by giving you a temporary option, a temporary passage for the message so that the sender and receiver can do the communication between themselves. So there is no dedicated connection, no dedicated direct physical connection that is established between every sender to every receiver in the world. But every time a communication has to happen, a path is set up and that path can be uh, a connection using multiple links. So if uh, we have a network as I have shown in this figure which consists of four different uh, systems say A, B, C and D and they want to communicate with each other. So there are no dedicated direct links between these uh, systems but there are four nodes that are present in this network and let us suppose that this is the nodes are present somewhere in the internet. So the nodes as we know each node in a network is capable of sending out information or the message that is receiving from one end to different possible routes. Okay. So if A has to send some message to D then it can send the message to node N1 then the node N1 can forward this message to node N2 and then N2 can send it to node N4 and finally to D. So basically when A and D had to communicate, we established a temporary sequence of links that was that helped A and D in their communication. So this is the concept of switching. Switching basically allows routing or routing, however you pronounce it, routing of data through various nodes in a network and routing means that data is sent through different links whichever link is available for uh, further communication so if a has to send data to d and uh, the message sent by a is first received by node n1 then n1 will first find that what is the most suitable link which is available also and which will help in this communication and eventually give the message to D. So N1 will check if uh, this link is available, if this link is available or this link is available or which is the best link that is available. And then depending on that, it will send or route the data forward and it will be the responsibility of the next node who is receiving the message from A from N1 through N1 to forward it ahead so that it, the message eventually reaches D. So these nodes can be switches or routers or gateways. So basically what we are doing that we are uh, forming a temporary route for data transmission. This route is not fixed. It may vary every time. Now depending on the uh, depending on how this temporary route is created we have two types of switching techniques. First is circuit switching and second is packet switching. So before explaining both these concepts in detail, I'll just give you a short gist of the differences of the two. So circuit switching, what it does, it, uh, it says that if A has to send data to D, then I will find one path and all the packets of a message that has to be sent from A to D will be sent through that path only. But packet switching says 
that I will break down the message that has to be sent from A to D into different packets and these packets will be sent over the network and each packet can take a different route among itself. Okay, so uh, these this is the main difference between uh, packet switching and uh, circuit switching that circuit switching develops a dedicated path. Okay, dedicated path in the sense ki for one communication the path will not change. So if A has to send data to D then in case of circuit switching let us suppose that the path that has been established is A to N1 then from N1 to N2 then from N2 to N4 and from N4 to D. Now we know that whenever a message or data has to be sent it is broken down into chunks or pieces and those chunks are known as packets. Now data is sent uh, over the network in the form of single packets right so all the packets suppose if the message of a contains five packets then all these five packets will travel this particular path that has been decided before communication no other path will be taken okay so in circuit switching before the communication starts uh, the route or the path through which all the packets have to travel is fixed for that communication and that link is broken only when all the packets have reached the destination but the difference uh, between packet switching and circuit switching is that in case of packet switching when the message of a is broken down into five different packets each packet can go through any of the path and eventually reach its destination so let's say packet a packet one of uh, uh, the message sent by a goes first to node n1 then it goes to node n3 and then it goes to node n4 and from there it reaches d now the second packet from uh, of the message that was sent by a will go from a to n1 then it will go to n2 and then it will go to N4 from where it will reach D. So independent packets can take any path over the network. Uh, say third packet goes from A to N1 and then from N1 to N4. So this is the difference between circuit switching and packet switching. And in case of packet switching, the channel through which the link through which uh, the packet is being transmitted will only be occupied for that duration in some other point of time some other packet from another message can occupy that link okay so let's see theoretically what are the differences in case of circuit switching as i told you a dedicated path is established between a sender and a receiver and this dedicated path is a sequence of links okay so it is not a single wire that is laid down between the sender and receiver rather it is a, a sequence that is one by one there are links that are followed so that uh, the message can travel from one node to the other uh, through the network okay so all the packets follow the same sequence say from a to node 1 to node 4 and then to d no packet of this message will take any other path or any other route so the classic example of circuit switching is the phone calls that you used to schedule in previous days so what used to happen is when you called the operator in the earlier days and you said you want to reach so and so receiver or so and so destination then the operator used to actually find the physical wires that are connecting the sender to the receiver and then develop a path for that communication you know he, he or she used to reserve that channel temporarily for that particular communication to happen and then the operator used to inform you that the that your call has been scheduled from this time to this time because for that communication certain links that are connecting the sender and the receiver the physical wires have been reserved so you have to start your communication here and end here these are the rules okay now comes packet switching in packet switching different packets of the same message may 
take different routes to the receiver so it is not necessary they will always take different routes they may take the same route if they are available it depends upon the availability of the channel on the congestion of the channel whether the channel is working or not or what node feels that what is the best route to put this packet forward so when all the packets reach the destination they might arrive in a disarranged order so in circuit switching when all the packets are following the same path so if the first packet is sent first it will reach the destination first then if the second packet is sent by the sender it will reach this uh, receiver also after the first packet has been received so in circuit switching packets are received in an ordered fashion in the way they were sent by the sender but in packet switching since everyone is coming from different route so packets may arrive out of order so what happens at the receiver end at the destination all the packets are rearranged so that the original message can be uh, restored it can be understood by the receiver okay and as i mentioned the links that are occupied can be overtaken by some other message uh, in some other point of time so uh, in both the cases in circuit switching also in packet switching also the links that are being occupied are only for that particular direct for that particular duration so as soon as uh, the communication between a and b gets over all the links reserved for communication using circuit switching will get released immediately and in case of packet switching once the packet has uh, traversed from node 1 to node 4 for example then this uh, this particular path can be used for sending another packet that may belong to some other communication so in packet switching the link the intermediate links get reserved only for the duration for which the packet travels whereas in circuit switching the intermediate links get reserved for the entire duration till all the packets travel from sender to the receiver okay so that's the difference between packet switching and circuit switching and these are the two time kinds of uh, uh, switching techniques that happen in data communication so that's all for today's video thank you for watching till we meet in the next video mind your exam